Welcome back to another video of Medwitz Made Simple. Subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon nearby to get notified as soon as I upload a new video. In this video, I'll be talking about asthma. Asthma is a disease of the conducting airways, which are the bronchi, and which is asthma is characterized by episodic bronchoconstriction due to airway hypersensitivity, increased inflammation and increased mucus secretion. Now for the episodic bronchoconstriction to take place, there is something known as a trigger which is responsible for all of these uh, features of asthma. So watch this video fully in order to know all the things you must know about asthma. There are two main types of asthma. The first one is atopic asthma in which there is an evidence of allergen sensitization for example the patient may have dust allergy or they may get asthma on exposure to cold climate etc and the second one is non atopic asthma in which the patients do not have any evidence of any specific allergen sensitization now the common uh, stimuli for atopic asthma includes exposure to cold climate exposure to dust animal hairs dander pollen and in some cases even stress or exercise can induce asthma which is known as exercise induced asthma so now let's talk about the pathogenesis of atopic asthma first of all it is a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction a classic example of type 1 hypersensitivity reaction is atopic asthma and it is mediated by IgE. Now I'll put a picture of an eosinophil in the top right corner because in asthma there is increase in the eosinophil count in the peripheral blood of the patients. So if you're gonna take a peripheral blood sample from a patient of asthma and you're gonna observe it under, under the microscope you're gonna find an increase in the number of eosinophils. So first of all when a patient who is having atopic asthma comes into contact with a trigger or stimuli for example cold or uh, dust or animal hair what happens is that there will be over activity of TH2 cells now, these are basically T helper cells so in normal people there will be increase in activity of T helper 1 cells whereas in asthmatic individuals there is an opposite thing which is actually happening these people will have an increase or abnormal overactivity of T helper 2 cells. Now this is not good because T helper 2 cells when they become active they will start to secrete cytokines such as interleukin 4 and 5 and these interleukins will cause overstimulation of the B cells. As you all know B cells can produce immunoglobulins. Now in this case the B cells will produce a lot of IgE. When IgE is produced, these IgE will go and act on the mast cells. The mast cells are the storage cells of histamine. When IgE acts on the mast cells, it will cause degranulation of the mast cells and the release of histamine will take place. Now the histamine is one of very important mediator of bronchoconstriction and various other events which take place in asthmatic people. There are various factors which are involved in the pathogenesis of asthma. First of all, there is an immune response for sure, especially in cases of atopic asthma. There is an exaggerated TH2 activity, as I have told you earlier. The TH2 activity is increased, leading to various cascade of events, like activation of B cells to secrete a lot of IgE, which in turn causes degranulation of mast cells and release of histamine. Okay, so this is the basic immune response which happens in asthmatic individuals. There is also evidence of um, genetic uh, relationship with asthma. Uh, various uh, genetic causes have been found to be linked with asthma. For example, uh, a, partic a particular loci on chromosome 5Q um, has known to contain regions which encode for interleukins uh, which are specific for asthma so let's not get too much into that uh, just know that there is some genetic basis for asthma and 
most important thing which is uh, becoming a very important uh, cause for increase in the cases of asthma these days is environment now asthma is becoming more common in cities compared to villages this is because of the increase in the pollution and the number of smokers automobiles etc in cities that leads to increase in the incidence of asthma cases each and every year so these are the main factors which are involved in asthma there are various mediators of asthma attack this includes leukotrienes acetylcholine histamine and interleukins such mainly IL-4 and interleukin-5 there are various other mediators of asthma attack too I've just put the very important things over here other mediator could include platelet activating factor and there are so many other factors which are actually involved in carrying out an acute attack of asthma now these are called the culprits which are actually involved in the bronchoconstriction and various events of asthma so since asthma involves a lot of mediators these mediators are collectively known as mediator soup as classically described in the textbook so now let's see about the morphology of the airway that is the bronchi in case of asthma in the extreme left you can see a picture of normal airway there you can see that the airway cavity is relatively bigger so the patient can breathe comfortably in the picture which is given in the middle you can see that the airway is kind of narrower compared to the picture in the extreme left now this is the airway of a, uh, of an asthmatic individual when he is taking rest okay he is not under stress or he is not under an asthmatic attack while he is rest itself you can see that the airway is narrowed so the patient will have difficulty in breathing throughout his life and that will get exaggerated especially during an asthma attack okay now when does that asthma attack take place in the case of most of the individuals when the particular trigger or stimuli which is responsible for causing asthma in them usually uh, for example exposure to dust or cold weather uh, are the usual triggers for in most of the cases when the patient comes in contact with the stimuli what will happen is there will be an acute asthma attack where there will be bronchoconstriction already the lumen is uh, narrowed now the lumen is getting even more narrowed and that will decrease the breathing in the patient and they're going to have the symptoms of asthma at that time there's something known as airway remodeling which occurs in the airway of the patients of asthma now this is most commonly seen in patients who are who are chronic cases of asthma so on long standing cases of asthma what happens is the airway will undergo various changes to uh, which are which occurs in response to uh, the chronic insult and inflammation which is taking place in the asthmatic bronchi and in addition to that they have also found that there is an increase in gro certain growth factor secretion in the local area in the bronchi now this will lead to various changes which are classically described as airway remodeling now this includes airway wall thickening subbasement membrane fibrosis increased vascularity increase in size of submucosal glands and number of goblet cells hypertrophy and hyperplasia of bronchial smooth muscle now these are the important things which actually happen in the bronchi of asthmatic patients if they are a known case of asthma for so many years okay so what signif what's the significant thing here there is airway wall thickening okay so when the airway wall gets thickened the lumen progressively becomes smaller and smaller and when the patient gets an acute asthma attack the already smaller lumen will further get compromised and the patient will have very difficult very hard time breathing okay the subbasement membrane fibrosis the second point is actually the result of deposition of collagen fibers under the basement membrane the increased vascularity is also a feature in airway remodeling the fourth point which is increase in size of submucosal glands and number of goblet cells will result in increased mucus production and that will further worsen the condition here the fifth point is hypertrophy and hyperplasia of bronchial smooth muscle that may be due to the increase in certain growth factor secretion in the bronchi 
that will cause the proliferation and increase in the size of bronchial smooth muscle and at the time of acute asthma attack this this increased number and size of the bronchial muscles are going to act and they're going to worsen the condition by causing severe bronchoconstriction now that's airway remodeling so this is a classic picture of airway remodeling in the case of a chronic asthma patient here you can see that there is increased mucus production which is uh, making the lumen very narrow where the airway is very narrowed so this kind of patients are going to have a hard time breathing so there is excess mucus in this picture and there is increased proliferation and size of the goblet cells which line the airway and the submucosa is swollen and edematous uh, there is also smooth muscle proliferation and so many other things which I have talked about in the previous slide this is known as airway remodeling the clinical features of asthma it's so obvious the patients will have most of the patients will have cough as their presenting complaint and that's more most uh, commonly seen in the midnight or in early morning now this is kind of disturbing for the patient and their sleep may get disturbed in certain cases they may also have chest tightness uh, which is described from, by some patients dyspnea is very common in these patients breathing is a tough thing for these patients they can't breathe normally and especially when they do some activity or when they ex when they get exposed to the stimuli for which they are sensitive for example if a patient is sensitive to cold weather and if they get exposed to that a particular stimuli for example if the patient goes out in cold weather without any protective measure they're going to have an acute asthmatic attack and they're going to get everything worsened they're going to have hard time breathing and everything's going worse for the patient unless some intervention is taking place we'll talk about that in a couple of slides the diagnosis first of all um, asthma is actually a clinical diagnosis you're gonna sit and talk with the patient you're gonna listen to their symptoms and that's going to help to, uh, that's gonna tell you uh, what's really going through in them and you can actually diagnose asthma based on the classical features such as cough in the night and in the morning chest tightness difficulty in breathing especially in expiration so you know in addition to that if you want to have a strong foundation for your diagnosis you've got to do something known as spirometry this is a kind of graph which you actually get in spirometry the curve which is present below the horizontal line denotes inspiration and the curve which is present above the horizontal line denotes expiration here you can see that uh, uh, here actually the curve which is below the, the horizontal line which actually is inspiration is actually normal in these patients. These patients can breathe in air relatively um, easier. So breathing in air is actually not a problem for most of the patients of asthma. What the real problem is for these patients is actually expiration. So the obstruction which is present in the airway will make it difficult for them to breathe the air out of the lungs so each and every time some amount of air is going to accumulate inside their lungs and that's going to make them uh, feel a chest tightness uh, feel symptoms such as chest tightness and all that so here you can see that the obstruction part of this curve which is the curve which is present above the horizontal line is kind of bent in, uh, in normally this has to be straight so when this gets so much of um, bent when this gets bent uh, what this denotes is there is an obstructive lung pathology rather than any other pathology so that may be either asthma or any other chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases which is abbreviated as copd which includes emphysema bronchiectasis okay so we'll talk about those diseases uh, in some other video so here we'll focus on asthma alone okay this is how a spirometry uh, looks like in asthma patients okay so the another finding uh, which is very important to distinguish between obstructive and restrictive lung diseases is known as FEV1 by FVC ratio. Okay, FEV1 is the forced expiratory volume in the first second. So the FVC is first vital capacity. So this ratio will help us to find out if the patient has an obstructive lung pathology or a restrictive lung pathology. In the cases of obstructive lung pathology, what happens is this ratio gets reduced to less than 0.7. But in the cases of restrictive lung diseases, this ratio is usually 
unaffected or it's about uh, it's usually normal that's because in asthmatic individuals the numerator which is the fev1 gets decreased so much but fvc usually remains normal that's big that's the reason uh, why the, the why the ratio gets decreased in obstructive lung diseases whereas in restrictive lung diseases both the fev1 and fvc that is both the numerator and denominator gets decreased almost equally so the ratio becomes unaltered so the fev1 by fvc ratio is usually normal okay so another way to identify this thing uh, you need to be very confident on this thing the fev1 by fvc ratio is usually less than 0.7 in obstructive lung diseases this is a very important thing you must know the third thing the fev1 the forced expiratory volume the first second increases following bronchodilator administration so this is a classical thing which is seen in asthma the airway obstruction which is present in these patients is usually reversible and that is what is differentiating asthma from other COPDs such as emphysema where the airway obstruction is not reversible here it is usually reversible with a bronchodilator such as um, short acting beta agonist or long acting beta agonist okay usually a short acting beta agonist is used to uh, demonstrate the increase in FEV1 following bronchodilator administration okay now status asthmaticus this is a complication of asthma or let's say a, the a, a severe uh, a severe manifestation of asthma this is usually seen in patients who are chronic cases of asthma this is an acute uh, this is a case in which the acute attack of asthma may last to even days or even weeks usually an asthma attack will last for minutes to hours but in this case the, the attack may last to even days or even weeks this is this is very severe and this can lead to cyanosis and even death in very few patients unless proper intervention is given so if a patient is found to have status asthmaticus we have to um, the treatment of the management of status asthmaticus is a different thing which is uh, a separate thing actually so the treatment is mainly giving oxygen uh, inhaled beta agonists intravenous corticosteroids and we have to treat any other respiratory tract infection which is present in the patient along with the other things if the patient is found to have another respiratory tract infection that may have triggered the um, this severe kind of asthma in the patient so you should treat that respiratory tract infection also this uh, condition if, if you find a patient with that status asthmatica, asthmaticus uh, we have to intervene immediately and all the asthma patients should be advised of this complication and they should be told that if they if they develop status asthmaticus they should be uh, they should be coming to the hospital to seek um, uh, to seek health care from the experts so because if they if they don't if they do not get proper intervention in the right time uh, they may even die and uh, if they come to the hospital uh, with various management modalities such as giving oxygen, inhaled beta agonists and intravenous corticosteroids, uh, these patients can be saved in most of the cases. So if you like this video, if you want me to make more videos, please support me by donating on Patreon. The link is given in the description box of this video. So subscribe to my channel for more videos like that and press the bell icon nearby to get notified as soon as I upload a new video.